Hey guys, I am Trent for Trent Sense, and I am right now in the middle of editing video for my Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 review. But I just wanted to take this quick moment to notify you guys of something that happened recently. For those people who follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you basically already know what I'm about to say right now. Um, there are two parts to the news. I am no longer with T-Mobile and I have recently switched back to AT&T. The whole reason for me going back to AT&T is all about saving money and consolidating bills in the midst of my searching for a job. In the effort to try and save money, I pitched the idea of a family plan on one network to consolidate the cellular phone bill. Of course, I wanted to have this family plan on T-Mobile, but it turns out when you have other parties that are on AT&T with the iPhone 3GS, it is a bit difficult to sway them from the iPhone because um, the one thing I didn't want to do was to force someone to take their iPhone 3GS and to go on to a network that didn't support 3G. That just wouldn't have been fair. I feel very good about being able to save money every year, but I have to be honest with you guys, it did sting a little bit because um, upon going back to AT&T, there were three cons that immediately popped into my mind. Um, first thing is that I would have to be locked to a contract for two years. The second con is that I would have to sell my Nexus One since it's not the version that's compatible with AT&T 3G. Um, the third con is that I would have to tolerate data caps on my usage um, after AT&T had recently implemented those limits not too long ago. After selling my Nexus One from T-Mobile and selling the two docks that I had with it, I only had a little over $300. Now, as many of you know, buying a Nexus One requires at least $500, so I, I couldn't afford it. I figured I may as well just go ahead and use that money to buy a subsidized device on AT&T. There were a few of my Facebook and Twitter followers who threw out the question to me, why not go for the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 3GS? As much as I love Apple for its computers and its iPods, I am not really a fan of the iPhone at this point. Um, to me, the only operating system that really pleases my own preferences happens to be Android. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, there were only two options available to me from the network, and those were the Motorola Backflip and the newly released HTC Aria. So at that point, I figured if I can't get the best touchscreen smartphone on AT&T, I may as well go ahead and focus on getting a smartphone that had the best hardware QWERTY keypad. Even though I could no longer be with Android, I still wanted to have a device that was at least compatible with Google Sync. Google Sync is software that allows a non-Android device to have Google information synced to it through the air. Um, in other words, it's much like Google Sync. There are a few operating systems out there that are compatible with Google Sync. And um, two of those happen to be the Symbian operating system and the BlackBerry operating system. The only two options that seemed uh, viable at the time that I stood in the middle of the AT&T store were the Nokia E71X and the BlackBerry uh, Bold model. I ended up using the BlackBerry 9700 for a couple days, but I didn't like it because it was too small and just too cramped, and I wanted something a little bit wider with a better hardware QWERTY experience. At that point, I went back to the AT&T store and I exchanged the 9700 for the BlackBerry Bold 9000. I'm not going to get into the details about the BlackBerry Bold 9000. Um, I can make a video of that later on. but. I can tell you guys that the BlackBerry Bold 9000 offers one of the most amazing hardware QWERTY experiences that I've ever felt with a smartphone. Now, this is where part two of my news comes into play. 
For those of you who already have done research on the Samsung Galaxy S phone, you already know what a beast it is in comparison to the Nexus One and other competing Android devices for right now. Once AT&T announced the release date for the Captivate, as well as the price, I made the decision to go ahead and return my BlackBerry 9000 in order to exchange it for the Captivate. So. As of right now, I'm telling all of you that not only am I back with AT&T, but tomorrow I will be exchanging my BlackBerry Bold 9000 for the Samsung Captivate device. And I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to have a high-end Android phone on the AT&T network. Once I finish posting this video to YouTube, um, I believe I'm going to hop into my car and... Uh, sort of play with the idea of camping outside of the AT&T store, either late at night or maybe early in the morning. I haven't decided yet, but either way, I will be outside of the AT&T store before it opens its doors tomorrow to get my Samsung Captivate. So with all that being said, in the meantime, you guys can stay tuned for my upcoming review of the Sony Ericsson X10, as well as an upcoming unboxing of the Samsung Captivate. All of you guys, take care and stay safe.